I'm glad so many of you watched the video yesterday and have turned in um, a copy of your notes, but we're still missing a lot of students. So if you could reach out to your friends and let them know I still need to see their work, that would be awesome because it's probably easier for you guys to get in contact with them than me. So um, happy St. Patrick's Day. Today is a holiday for my people and my culture. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit of fun facts about Ireland at the end of the video, but I do wanna kinda tie this into our economics lesson. So you know how we have um, our economic continuum. I wanted to show you guys where Ireland falls on this. So let me draw it. Okay, middle is mixed, we know. The left is command. And the right is market. Okay, so there are 195 countries in the world. Ireland is the sixth most free. So they're like really close to market over here. So Ireland. And now when I'm talking about their economic system, I'm not talking about Northern Ireland because remember, that's part of the United Kingdom. But we're talking about the Republic of Ireland, which is mostly the um, whole island of Ireland. And remember, it's not a tropical island. It's like green and foresty and cold. So that type of island. Okay, so, um, oh, more things about Ireland. Their currency that they use is called the Euro, which all the countries in the European Union use the Euro. Besides the United Kingdom, they use the British pound because, I don't know, that's like, I guess what they wanted to do. Um, what else did I write down about this? I think that's it for now. But I do have some fun facts about how my family celebrates St. Patrick's Day, what it means to be Irish, and who St. Patrick is. So we'll get into that later after we do the chart. So everyone should have this chart right here. Remember, if you don't have it, I'll hold it up right here for a second so you can see it. We have our three countries, Mexico, Brazil and Cuba. At the top, we're gonna do our economic system that they have, their freedoms in that country, and the regulations, so basically the rules that they have to follow. Now, I bet you already know Cuba's gonna have the most rules, right? Because we know they're really close to command on the economic continuum. All right, so let's get started with our chart. If you put a different answer, you can just erase it or cross it out if you use a pen and just correct what you have, okay? So our first box, we're doing Mexico's economic system right here. We're gonna do Mexico all the way across, then we're gonna do Brazil all the way across, and then we're gonna do Cuba all the way across. So Mexico's economic system obviously is mixed. You can own your own business in Mexico. So on our continuum, they fall closer to market than they do command. So I'm writing that, falls closer to market than command. Okay, see, got that. All right, now our next one, in Mexico, their freedoms, they're generally free to make economic decisions. I'm gonna just write econ. That's like the abbreviation for economics. Uh, economic decisions. Um, what else? Uh, citizens own most of the resources in the country and then they sell those and businesses get their share of taxes from that. So we'll write that. Um, citizens own most land slash businesses slash resources. All right, see, got it right here. And then now we're on our last one, regulations in Mexico. So the government still has a say, you can't just do whatever you want in Mexico. So they have many laws that control production and price of goods, that's what we're gonna write here. I'm gonna put gov has many laws that control production and price of goods. I 
Has anyone ever here been to Mexico or like you know someone in Mexico who owns their own business? If you do, I'd like to hear about it. So that's super cool to me. All right, so now our next country, Brazil. You guys remember what language they speak in Brazil? It's not like the rest of Latin America. So we're gonna do Brazil's economic system, Brazil's freedoms, and Brazil's regulations, just like we did with here. Okay, so obviously in Brazil, we know you can own your own business, So, but they do have rules, so that would be mixed. And they also fall closer to market than command closer to market and command oh yeah I forgot to say if you don't have a printer and you wrote this on your own paper that's fine too as long as you get your chart done I don't care what you write it on you can write it on a dry erase board I don't care as long as you do it so okay so mix falls closer to market than command now in our freedoms box it's going to be a little bit different than Mexico. Brazil is less free in terms of businesses than Mexico is. So we're going to write, can make some econ, remember that means economic decisions, um, and entrepreneurship, remember what that is? It means owning your own business. We're going to write that. Entre Entrepreneur ship is encouraged. See right here. Now our next box for regulations, um, the government is really active in Brazil. They have high taxes and um, they have a lot of tariffs. Remember, a tariff is a tax on imported goods and it's not the country that pays the tariff, it's whoever buys the product pays the tariff. Um, so the government also owns a lot of industries and they have a lot of rules for businesses. So we'll just write, gov is active in business. They, uh, the gov owns a lot of industries and strict regulations for businesses. Okay, now remember, it is important for governments to have regulation over business because again, Businesses care about one thing. We already talked about this. They care about money. That's their bottom line. And if the government didn't say, hey, your products have to be safe, um, do you think that they would make them safe? No. But the other side of that is sometimes the government can have too much control where it kind of makes it hard for businesses to operate and create the best product or service for their customers. So Brazil is towards that end, like where they have too much regulation, where in the United States we have pretty much a good amount. So I'm sure there's examples of where it could go one way or the other, but in general, we have a nice balance. So, okay, lastly, we are on Cuba. We know a lot about Cuba. It was interesting to learn about. So obviously, uh, Cuba, no country is 100% command, but Cuba is very close, so we're just gonna write command. They're not close, they're not close to mix. They're definitely not close to market. Market means you can own and operate your own business, okay, however you want. Citizens cannot do that in Cuba. Now, our freedoms go in the middle box. So, all I wrote in this one was command, okay? Now, now we're gonna write hardly any economic freedom. Now, when we say economic freedom, we're not talking about personal freedom. There's a difference. Economic freedom has to do with businesses, the freedom that businesses have. Personal freedom, um, that's regard to the rights you have as a citizen of whatever country you're in um, or whatever country you call home. Okay, so then our last box is the regulations. We know Cuba has a lot of regulations for businesses. Obviously, if 
they have net like their underground Netflix El Paquete like Netflix is not a business in Cuba that's they don't have that so we know there's a lot of rules that's what we mean by regulations so we're gonna write government I'm just gonna write gov makes um, the majority of I'm gonna write econ decisions Okay, and the government owns all the property and all the resources. All right, so I'm going to hold this up for a second so you guys can see everything that we have on here so you can adjust yours if it's incorrect. Now, I still want to see a copy of yours so I know that you've done the work today and you have attended virtual school for the day. So we're done with that and I will tell you a little bit about St. Patrick's Day and being um, of Irish descent. I've never lived in Ireland. I've never been there, but I know that I'm Irish based on hello. Look at me. And secondly, the result of my DNA test that I took and just because... My family has told me this, so I already, already knew that I was Irish. Now, um, one thing that you can tell about people from Ireland is that a lot of people who are Irish have red hair, just like me. So, my hair has always been this color. Um, no one else in my family has this, though. This is, like, having red hair is actually a genetic mutation, so people aren't supposed to have red hair, but if both of your parents have this mutated gene it can be passed on to you so normally every year I have like one student who has um, red hair and you don't have to be Irish to have red hair um, you can be Egyptian or Mexican or whatever and still have red hair but in Ireland um, there's just like a really high population of people that have red hair um, in the world it's only two percent of the world's population has red hair but in Ireland it's like 10 to 30 percent of Irish people have red hair and Scottish people tend to have red hair too um, which is part of the United Kingdom so okay in Ireland they have a patron saint just like Mexico does in Mexico um, their patron saint is Guadalupe in Ireland our patron saint is St. Patrick which is why we celebrate him today now let me tell you a bit about St. Patrick St. Patrick um, was born in Britain, so he's not actually Irish, um, but he was captured and taken as a slave to Ireland. Eventually, he got out of slavery, and he decided to become a priest, I think he's a priest, so he wanted to go and spread Christianity around Ireland because mo most people at the time were pagan, and that means they didn't believe in one god. They believed in, like, many gods, and they did, like, witchcraft, stuff like that, and St. Patrick was like, hold up we have to be Catholic. So he went and um, converted uh, pretty much everyone in Ireland to Catholicism, and so that's why we celebrate him today. Another myth about St. Patrick is that he rid all the snakes out of Ireland, which that's what my Nana told me growing up, but you know, there were never really any snakes in Ireland because they're cold-blooded and Ireland is cold, and there's no way for them to cross the water from other continents to get there. So what they really mean by ridding the snakes out of Ireland is like evil people and the pagans who didn't believe in one god, but they believed in many gods. So uh, what else did I write down for you guys? So in Ireland, St. Patrick's Day is a holiday. So the banks are closed. People don't go to work, people don't go to school. You're out and you're supposed to go to mass and go to church and celebrate St. Patrick because he had um, a really big deal in spreading Catholicism to the Irish people. And there's a lot of people whose family members are Irish immigrants. Like my family came over at some point um, to the United States from Ireland on my mom's side. So. That's why we have a big Irish Catholic population, especially in the Northeast region of the United States, which is where my family ended up. They're not from Mississippi, it's just me. <laughs> so everybody's off of school today, just like us in Ireland. 
And so we wear green on St. Patrick's Day to celebrate our Irish heritage because the Irish flag has three colors in it. They're green, white, and orange. Maybe the orange is for our hair, who knows? Um, but yeah, we, we wear green to show that we're proud of being Irish and we have lots of traditions. So in my family, um, when I was growing up, we would always go to my Nana's house and she would make soda bread, which is, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's not the best bread. It's like a loaf of bread, but it's made out of, um, soda water. So if you've ever seen like carbonated water, like that use that in soda bread instead of regular water to mix it. And we always listen to Irish music. Like I have this one Irish CD on my head that plays constantly on St. Patrick's Day just because I heard it so much growing up and we also eat something called corned beef and it's it's like brisket but just you know cooked a different way it's probably not as flavorful as the brisket you might have in Latin America and we also eat cabbage but green cabbage so my nana used to cook it just like boil it and put butter on it and salt and pepper and we also eat lots of potatoes because that's like an Irish, I don't want to say delicacy because it's like really common, but lots of Irish people will eat potatoes all the time. And in fact, there was um, a famine in Ireland. So at one point the whole country was starving because like the crops didn't grow and they actually called it the Irish potato famine. Um, so what I want to know from you guys is what holidays does your culture celebrate? So I know we have um, a lot of students from all over the world and I shared my culture with you and I'd really love to hear about yours. So again, if you have any questions, you know how to get in contact with me, email, oh, the school's calling me, decline. <laughs> um, you can, what was I saying? See, I, when I get interrupted, I forget. You can email me, you can message me on Instagram, you can tag me, hashtag Miss Langham, hashtag SMS6D. You can always post on Verge. And if you guys need anything, let me know. If you're having trouble with your assignment, like getting the assignments for other classes, let me know and I can reach out to the other teachers for you. Um, but yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day and your word for tomorrow is the Fidel Castro political cartoon in um, the PowerPoint that is attached on Burge. So I'll check in with you guys tomorrow about that. Bye.